Welcome to the Liberty Insider. This is your program that brings news, views, discussion, insight into religious liberty events in the US and around the world. My name is Lincoln Steed and I'm editor of Liberty Magazine, a magazine of a hundred years uh, success in presenting religious freedom from a separation of church and state viewpoint. Uh, my guest on this program, John Ashmead, attorney and uh, associate director of the general Con of the, of the not the general conference, I mean our You're church right. hierarchy, but you sure. worked for the Seventh Adventist Church uh, in the uh, Atlantic Union area, northeastern US, for the Public Affairs and Religious Liberty Department. Right. Uh, I love to get back to Bible stories, and, sure. and I really want to spend this time going back a few centuries, mm -hmm. but I'll pick up with something right now. There's a, a public official, Seventh Day Adventist, I, I don't really want to name him mm -hmm. just out of consideration to him but he's well placed in the US government, mm -hmm. uh, an appointed position for life, mm -hmm. and uh, right at the center of things. I often see him on television, major events, and talking to him in private, he said a number of times that he mm -hmm. believes that he's like Daniel, placed in the king's palace for right. a momentous time. Right. And, and I'm quite sure that he's right on the money. Right. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, we used to sing, dare to be a Daniel, mm -hmm. dare to, to uh, stand, you know, to, to a purpose true. Mm -hmm. and, and going back to Daniel at a point when his nation was basically destroyed, he was in a foreign land, and yet privileged, not so much by anyone's gift to him, but by his stance for, mm -hmm. for uh, his Lord and the mm -hmm. diet and went with it and so on. Mm -hmm. he, he was then on the inner circle. Right. Uh, there's some lessons to learn from how he behaved in that context and how sure. we might today. Sure. You know, can I share a, a quick story? Absolutely, about that's what my, you're here about for. My son. Even a long story. I know. <laughs> about my son, you know, yeah. when he was in the second grade, a, a, a debate developed in his class regarding creation and evolution. Mm -hmm. And, you know, fortunately, and, uh, is it this made a me secular, happy. Uh, public school? Uh, it's a private school, a secular school, but it's not a public school. And, you know, this, this debate developed, it was intense. He took the side of creation, his classmates took the side of evolution, and it, they went back and forth for, for a few weeks, and mm. it became really intense to the point where, you know, his classmates sort of exclu excluded him. He was sort of on an island by himself you know, advocating for what he thought to be true. And the discussion was so intense that the, the teacher ultimately had to tell them no more discussion on this issue. But he wouldn't and give in. He, he stuck, would not stuck, give in. The course, right? He stuck to his guns. Yeah. And I was very proud of him that he took a stand for something that he believed in. And, and that's what I, you know, when, when I think of uh, um, Daniel, that's what comes to mind as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to read Daniel and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, and the amazing providential successes, not just mm -hmm. with him, with his friends, right. delivered from the fiery furnace, mm -hmm. Daniel from the, the, uh, the lions. And mm -hmm. I'm sure those lions were hungry. The whole right. point of keeping lions right. in the den, for, you, they, wouldn't, they weren't fed much except sure. an, an, an occasional traitor. Mm -hmm. right. uh, but it's easy to think, you know, it was, you know, God was going to protect them and so on. But going right. into that situation, it was a pretty dark... Right. Uh, non-promising you know Daniel had faith but faith right. is without evidence it's right. just an internal deeply uh, seated hope that God's mm -hmm. going to help you see this thing through right. uh, and and you know we're the same now we don't really know and you, you, right. well in, in son's case he probably didn't even anticipate the level of opposition right right he, he uh, just acted innocently on what he believed and here I imagine it was a shock mm -hmm. And, and many people when they, unfortunately, many Christians, when they get some opposition, fade back, right. either emotionally or they don't even seem to have, which is their own fault, enough texts or enough belief, facts of belief right. to, to sort of counter them. Right, right. I, I remember, let me tell a story now, sure. which is a bit of a tale mm -hmm. on Adventism, but I, I think it proves the point. When I was in my teens, I remember we were all excited because one of the major leaders of our church was to appear on the Joe Pine show. Mm -hmm. Nobody except people a lot older than me will remember John, okay. Joe Pine. But he was a, uh, 
and a tech sh talk show host. Okay. Very sharp witted and sharp tongued, and he would mm. get people on. I don't know why anyone ever wanted on his show except right. that he was national and he right. would rip them to shreds. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this theologian and, 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 and administrator of the church, very well uh, published and, and, and well traveled and admired, he had appeared on the show. He was actually an Australian, mm -hmm. but based at our headquarters. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting back with everyone else and this is going to be great. Right. Within <laughs> maybe less than a minute, Joe Pine had started mocking him and right. nailed him. Right. And this guy was, bah, 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 bah. he right. didn't have any answer. And, you know, who am I to question his spirituality? I hope right. and presume he'll be, you know, playing the harps with everybody right. else in heaven. But I know he was not prepared. He, mm -hmm. he clearly had no experience or even anticipation what a non-believer would say. Right. He's just slashing away at his faith. Right. And I, I think that's something that, that anyone of any belief, but particularly a Christian, owes it to themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, know what you believe, why you believe it. Right. Be prepared to, to answer someone who, who's cynical and mocking and all the rest. Right. I think the key thing, you know, for a Christian believer is to be consistent in yeah. your practice of your faith. Um, you know, if, if, you, if you say that you're a Sabbath observer, uh, then you should always be seen well, observing the Sabbath. Well, you know this very Sabbath. well from in, right. in, interceding legally for people right. in the workplace. Right. If, if they're inconsistent, the game's right. almost lost before it it's, begins. It makes it very difficult to defend yeah. them. You, you, yeah. you, you, you need to be con, you know, consistent with, your, with what you believe. Um, yeah. That's very important. You know, one of the things uh, when I think about Daniel, um, um, it's the story in chapter six of Daniel when he's dealing with the lion's den. Um, but, you know, those in government with him colluded against him. And, yeah. you know, they got the king to pass a law. Now the thing, they tricked the king, they, they tricked the king <laughs> to pass a law. But the thing about that law that the Bible talks about that I find intriguing and, and somewhat relevant uh, to our times is that once he signed that law, it was irreversible. The law could not be changed. And, you know, and we see the injustice that such a law worked. And I, I wonder in our society, you know, if we interpret the Constitution in that way, you know, as a as a document that's not living, that doesn't take into uh -oh. account the human uh -oh. condition. You, the right, you know, right. the proponents of the living uh, Constitution. Right. Are, but are, but are, I wonder, are, I, I wonder if, if <laughs> you know, if, if we take that sort of mindset, no, we it. see the outcome for Daniel. He ended up in the lion's den. Well, there's yeah. a quote that I put on the back of Liberty recently, and it's hardly anyone seems to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson, writing about the Constitution, says many, uh, 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 I'm slightly, I'm, I don't remember exact words, but mm -hmm. he says, you know, many look at the Constitution as holy writ, right. that uh, you can't change it. Right. And he says, you know, what nonsense. He says, you might as well ask a man to wear the clothes that he wore when he was a child as to right. wear when he's an adult. Right. He says, we did well. He says, we deserve well of our country. Mm -hmm. But the idea that we knew everything is nonsense. Right. He says, I'm not for the quick and, and light uh, uh, constitutional adjustment, but he right. said, of course it's not locked in right. stone. Well, we certainly need to be mindful of precedent. We, we certainly yeah. need to know what those who drafted the Constitution yeah. believed and, and try to be faithful to, to their intentions, um, but to, to take a wooden sort of, you know, well, we it, have to view this exactly the same way when we now live in a modern world that they could never have anticipated right. makes no sense and, to me. And anyone that read, most people haven't read the Constitution outside right. of lawyers and right. maybe religious liberty activists. Right. But, you know, the Constitution embraced uh, denial of vote for women, mm -hmm. denial of vote and, and these to, to uh, African Americans and, and, of course, the perpetuation of slavery. Right. It, it, it includes wacky things like right. it actually sets a dollar limit to, mm -hmm. to lawsuits suits as I remember. All what right. is it, the ten dollars or something? Uh, I, I, that, that part of it I don't remember, but yes, yeah. Yes, it's there. Yeah. Uh, and, and um, uh, you know, it goes on and on. It's clearly a product of its time. Right. And, and, and it's shown that we, we know that you have to move on because the, right. the amendments uh, did away with right. some at, of those at, things. At some point, you know, we've had to amend the Constitution because, yeah. you know, clearly our founders didn't quite get it right in some areas. Right. And so amendment was necessary. And we know that it's very difficult uh, to amend the Constitution, but there are times and that's where that's fine. That needs they purposely made it difficult, right, right. which is a break on mm -hmm. on just flippant stuff. You know, right. the, the trend of the time and the and the clamor of the people. They they were they were very troubled by the clamor of right. the people. Right. They wanted to represent the people, but not respond to the people's whims and whimsies. Right. 
And I, and I think that's the genius of the system. Absolutely. You In know, that regard, it, I think it's, right. it's mm -hmm. extraordinary. Mm -hmm. uh, but it arose from their suspicion right. of the people. Right. And, and we don't really know how, getting back to Daniel, right. there's not great evidence that he was aware of the duplicity of his fellow uh, rulers right. who went to the king's side. Right. Uh, but but uh, he didn't seem to trouble himself much right. with that. But I, I think his action, ultimately, by you know praying in the win in, in his uh, window facing Jerusalem, I think that suggested that he, he understood what was going on. Well, he wasn't going to be cowed. Yeah. Right. He understood he what was going on, and he was going to take a stand. You know, yeah. this was n this was not his first time at the rodeo. I mean, he he dealt with uh, this when he was you know a, a young man in Babylon. Let me throw in a yeah. real world application. Sure. See what you say. Okay. The Seventh-day Adventist Church used to, um, in a major way, once a year go around and raise money uh, in gathering appeal, it was sure. called, go, go door to door asking mm -hmm. for help in what we were doing to help other people through mission endeavors, mm -hmm. but more than just that, just charity toward poor people and so on. Uh, and we offered them to help and we raised over the years many millions on that. Mm -hmm. The law started to change in different towns it became illegal mm -hmm. to even go door to door and much less uh, talk about religion and ask for money. Mm -hmm. And I was on the committee, uh, I used to write some of the material for this, right. and I saw that, that in many areas we stopped doing it because right. the law said we should stop some, doing something right. that was admirably good, mm -hmm. no threat to anyone. Mm -hmm. And it remained to the Jehovah's Witnesses to take that course to the, that, to the Supreme Court right. and, and uphold our right to do that. Mm -hmm. But we were pulling back. Now, it's a phenomenon that troubles me. Uh, in different countries, even in this country, the US at different times, there's been laws that would inhibit your, your reaching out and witnessing, speaking to other people about your sure. faith. Do you just respond to those laws and shrink back? Because right. the natural end of that is you'll be within four walls, right. essentially a prison, right. not free to reach out and do anything. Mm -hmm. Where do you resist? Right. Not to be a lawbreaker, but in the sense of do what you're called to do in this higher calling, regardless of the consequence. Right. And that's what Daniel had to face. And, sure. and you're right, I'll still pray. Right. You know, this is what I do. Why, mm. should, why should I be afraid of any consequence? Because I'm only doing what God's asked me to do. Right. You know, I, I think far too often our church members don't realize that. And so when they're facing Sabbath accommodation issues, you know, instead of standing up, instead of pressing forward, um, instead of filing an action with, you know, um, you know, the employment agencies to defend their rights, they shrink away and they move on. And, and that impacts all of us. Yeah. You know, if, if they refuse to take a stand, that emboldens em employers right. to continue to act in the moved. same way and to keep pushing so that, you know, we're pushed out yeah. of that area. Um, that marketplace. And so it's very important for us to be willing to stand and to take a firm stand and say, no, this is the right way. The law protects me. And it's not a bad thing for me to initiate a lawsuit under these circumstances no. to, to stand for the rights of uh, all. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm not advocating law breaking at all mm -hmm. structurally, but right. it's not just working within laws. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's doing the right thing regardless of the consequence, which sometimes might entangle you with either uh, inadvertently compromising laws or on other occasions laws like this one with Daniel designed to right. thwart us. Right. And, and you well know as a lawyer there's some laws uh, that, that don't appear necessarily to be on religion or restricting religious right. practice but they may be designed by some clever right. <laughs> legislator to do exactly that. Right. Right. Uh, in fact uh, uh, well, there's elements of that even in the, J the Johnson Amendment, I think. Right. <laughs> uh, which, which is much debated, uh, well, not debated, it's, it's much discussed of late and intended right. to be revoked by this administration. Right. Uh, I think this is a good time to take a break. Okay. So uh, uh, st stay with us and we'll be back very shortly to continue this discussion of Daniel then and Daniel's now. Okay. Welcome back to the Liberty Insider. Before the break uh, with, with guest uh, John Ashmead, uh, we really had Daniel as our guest, didn't we? We were, yes. we were invoking that great he hero of Bible times, but a very important time of Bible history. People forget it. You know, Babylon is a kingdom. It was one of the, well, it was the first great mm -hmm. kingdom in that image that, that Nebuchadnezzar was shown right. that includes a description of all the kingdoms right down to our mm -hmm. present convoluted, weakened, well, there's very strong nations, but 
iron and of clay. So mm -hmm. the strongest metal of the, of the statue mm -hmm. mixed with the weakest, and that's right. the modern world. Right. But uh, at the same time, his nation, his church, was in disarray. Right. Uh, you know, you, you intercede for, for Adventists in the workplace, and, and, and some of them get satisfaction knowing they have an organization behind them, and, mm -hmm. and you and other lawyers. Mm -hmm. That's a certain security. Daniel didn't have that. His, right. his nation was, was in captivity or, or living in hovels, mm -hmm. the ones that were left behind back in Jerusalem. Right. They were finished. Right. Uh, so his faith was directly with God, and yet he was empowered to uh, respectfully deal with the potentates of the time who had total power of life or death over him at any moment. Right. I mean, it, I, I think, it, you know, it, it, Daniel's life is quite a testimony um, of faith when you're in a circumstance where you can believe that God has abandoned you. I mean, yeah. you've, you've been taken captive in a foreign land and you look up now and you're being targeted. You know, they want you to pledge your loyalty to the nation. That's right. And, 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 and that's you a real You understand challenge. exactly. Most people don't get it out of the story. Mm -hmm. he, uh, I remember being shocked first time a, a preacher mentioned it, but the mm -hmm. chances are it's almost a foregone fact that, that he and his friends had, had been uh, neutralized. They were eunuchs. Right. Uh, because it was common practice to, to take the, the, not just the brightest, but mm. the, the aristocracy, the sons right. and daughters of the aristocracy of the other country, which would denature, their, mm. would take away their, their future. Mm -hmm. they, they would be made unable to breed because the, the, the Babylonians didn't want them to breed into their right. stock. They wanted what they could give, service and, right. and, well, and expertise. We never hear about a Mrs. Daniel, do we? No. <laughs> and I have no burden to make that point, right. but the point is he was, mm. that's, the level of disempowerment was incredible. Right. He was turned into a, a, a cog in the machinery mm -hmm. of another nation to uh, serve them. Know, it would seem that he was being trained to um, be loyal to Babylon and, and to lead his people to be loyal to Babylon yeah. as well. And, and, you know, we see that happening today. I, I mean, and, and you know, the education that we receive trains us to be loyal. You think exactly citizens. like me. Right. We, people don't right. realize it. And it's not that we should oppose right. the education system, but right. it's not to train people to be God-fearing right. uh, uh, citizens of heaven. It's to be useful functionaries of a, of a modern-day machine of, sure. of, of industry and all the rest that fit into that to serve the state needs, secular mm -hmm. needs. And, and the pull toward compromise is, is overwhelming right. and it's intentional. Right, right. And you know, the, 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 when, when you look at the, the, the whole situation with the, the statue and bowing down and, and the worship, uh, you know, I, I wonder if we are as a country heading in that direction where we are, you, we are upholding these symbols of loyalty, you know, like the flag, the, the, the national anthem, and we are sort of demanding that everyone um, accept these in the same way, un under the same t uh, terms. I, I wonder if yeah. we're heading that way as a country, and, and, and is that dangerous? And the Supreme Court helped us a little to mm. fight it, but you know, the Pledge of Allegiance, which is right. a fine thing, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, from the, was it 1950 some on, mm -hmm. Uh, they put, uh, they mixed God into Under the God, deal. Right. Okay. Uh, so it's the state talismans and religion, and, mm -hmm. and you're, it's all one and the same. Loyalty right. to this country is loyalty to God. Well, mm -hmm. maybe not, right. but it's claiming that it is. And this is, you know, I, I, I've preached a number of times on, on the plains of Dura there mm -hmm. with the, uh, the statue and the fire and all the rest. Mm -hmm. And Nebuchadnezzar says, you know, why don't you bow down and worship my image and my gods? Right. He put, the, he, he mixed both in. Right. It clearly was a state symbol and a religious symbol, and one mm. was the same as the other. Right. Right. Uh, we, you know, and the state's not inclined to be religious, but it likes to have sanctimony around its, its uh, you know, the eagle and all the rest. Right. We're, we're no different from the Romans. We paraded on a standard and, you know, you've... Right. You genuflect before it. We, right. We've got to res not, not so much resist, but be aware of this right. and, and keep our ultimate loyalty in mind. You know, I, I think the important thing under these circumstances, <clears throat> look, you should be free if you want to engage and embrace these, these ideas, but if you choose not to go with the flow, to run with the crowd, uh, that you don't suffer persecution for that. Yeah. I think that's a mature uh, nation, a mature democracy sure. where people can protest uh, when they see the need to, when they, see, when they feel like they want to make a point or if they, don't, if they just simply don't want to do it. Uh, yeah, it, but, you know. and, and you know, I've thought about this a lot, mm -hmm. the necessity some of in this job. Uh, that sounds good 
and the US has embraced that from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But if you were a rational, secular leader, it's not self-evident that that's to the good of keeping a country together. Right. Uh, you, and, and, and what I think it feeds toward, which Jefferson and others saw, Jefferson more than most, mm -hmm. it a allows rebellion, in an right. essence, to flourish. Jefferson just thought that was great because you let it reveal itself and then you stop it out now right. and then. Right. But if you're, if you're really after a, a continuing stable society, it's not mm -hmm. the greatest thing to allow dissidents to develop right. or even what we argue for internationally, multiple religious allegiances right. because they all, at the very least, bleed away monolithic support for right. the state, which more and more people right. want to support. But you know, you know, the basic protest is sort of a check on government power. Oh, you know, the fact that... If you, you want know, to check government power, no it, government I'll, I'll, wants to be checked. Right. But, 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 but it's, it's important, you know, yeah. for people to we, be able we, to, to, to stand up and protest and say, no, you've gone too far, we want to bring this to your attention, it's time to turn back from the direction where you're going. Yeah. And I, I think that's, that's a vital part of a healthy nation. And if we stamp that out, if we prevent that from well, happening, I agree with you. It, it's a real threat to freedom. In the philosophical sense, my point is no government yeah. even a democratic government in the sense of those governing and the mm -hmm. ones in the system are happy with that. Right. They inherently resist it. Right. Oh, no, they do. They and, do. And, uh, and religion has is is always been a powerful dissonance mm -hmm. towards such systems. Right. I, I think, you know, there, there is always that tension between religion and the state in the sense that, you know, many religious people, their first loyalty is to God right. and not to the state. And so if you go in with that mindset, you know, whenever the state enacts a law or, you know, wants you to act in a certain way that's certainly inconsistent with your religious practice, then you have that tension. Yeah. Uh, and you have that pull and you don't have the loyalty that the state often wants. But back to Daniel, mm -hmm. where do we see that tension? He, of course, it's a, a narrative and not, mm -hmm. not many words. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a lot unspoken, but there's not much. Ever. The only time I remember he seemed a little on edge justifiably was when the word went out that all the wise men were to be killed. Right. And Daniel begged for time and then spent the night praying and he got the right. answer. Right. Beyond that, he seemed to be serene in any situation. Right. You know, he, he seemed to want to be a good citizen and to fit in and to support the state. But, you know, I, I think whenever the state crossed the line, he was willing to bear the consequences. Well, the, the story that, right. that's at the end of the book is amazing with Bel Belshazzar, Belshazzar's right. feast. Right. Uh, that was one occasion Daniel didn't mince words. Right. Of uh, course, they weren't his words, but still, he could have soft soaked the, the writing on the wall. Right. But he says instead, your kingdom is, you were weighed in the right. balances, your kingdom is found wanting. Right. It's, quite, it's quite, quite a contrast between his interaction with Belteshazzar and Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. There was a degree of respect with Nebuchadnezzar yes. that was not shown. And clearly, Daniel realized that the state had gone too far, had crossed the line, and he had to take a firm stand and to be bold. And I think that we should look at that example. Um, you know, that there are times we, we, we don't have to always be protesting, but there's a time when the state crosses the line and we've got to be bold in our condemnation of what's taking place around yeah, us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, you've given the takeaway from this program right. two minutes early. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I, th I believe mm -hmm. it's not just a kid's song or a kid's story. Mm -hmm. Daniel does speak to today right. uh, uh, of the complication that serving the state brings and more and more. In a, wanted or not, in modern societies, we can't easily opt out. Right. We're part of the, of the, of the mesh right. of responsibility. But, but here's what I'll, I'll also point out, and you know, it just talks about our relationship with God. I mean, Daniel um, was taken captive and lived in Babylon, and lived in Babylon all of his life. There's no indication from the story that he, he was ever able to return to Jerusalem. No. And yet, despite that, he lived in, under an oppressive regime, and yet, well, in, under those, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yet under those circumstances, he remained faithful to God. Yeah. And that's quite a testimony to us that, you know, it's despite possible. the oppression that we're facing, the challenges that we're dealing with, God expects us to rise under any circumstance that we yeah. find ourselves in. He went from the bottom all the way to the top in government despite yeah. living in an, in an oppressive system. And well, I think uh, that we, ha I, we should do that as Christians. You know, we with shouldn't, few yeah. exceptions, integrity mm -hmm. is recognized even in a communist regime or sure. a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. 
They need people of integrity. Right. They don't need traitors, but a Christian right. shouldn't be a traitor to any system. Right, right. That's worth remembering. Right. No, I, I think Daniel is someone that we should admire. We should uh, emulate. Um, you know, he survived in an oppressive system and excelled. Psalms 137 has the captives in Babylon bewailing their fate, saying that by the rivers of Babylon we sat down and there they that brought us there in captivity required of us a song. And then dramatically they asked the question, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? The story of Babylon and uh, Daniel is quite an amazing one. You can read it in the book of Daniel. But in my view, we today are in the same position. All Christians should see themselves as in a strange land. This is not our home. And the trick, the challenge, the, the, the duty before us is how do we stand for the Lord? Sing the song through our life, a song that will attract other people by its, its melody and its compelling uh, pattern of consistency to God. How can we sing that? Attract other people, live a life of character that will be not just sung about, but uh, celebrated through the centuries. For Liberty Insider, this is Lincoln Steed.